G'day everyone. Well, it's now time for another Carnivorous Plants Nursery update. This is not just any update though, it's a special update because I'm well and truly into my automatic watering project for my Carnivorous Plants. It's otherwise known as the Blue Glove Project. Now, although this has been very, very time consuming, it's been quite hard work, it's also been very, very rewarding because at the end of the day, my plants are being watered and most importantly, they're happy. So I can't wait to show you what they look like. Now, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more quality carnivorous plants videos. Let's go and have a look. Okay, so before we go over to see the main plants, I just wanted to point out this little miniature garden here, this little carnivorous plants miniature garden featuring big mouth Venus's flytraps and Drosera burmanii, otherwise known as the tropical sundew. I've featured so many of these plants together on my Facebook posts. They do grow so well together, as you can see right here. Now this miniature garden here, I started off around about two years ago. I simply used this old disposable salad bowl that I got at a party hire shop and what I did was on the inside I put on some fly screen and I just stapled it to the edges here and I suppose I was anticipating that this plastic wasn't going to last very long and I was quite right because a couple of years later you can see how it's falling apart but by having that fly screen there on the inside it's kept the peat moss inside and you can see here just how the plants are looking. Absolutely beautiful. Look at all these flower stalks coming up from these Drosera burmanii. So many flowers there. Such a small plant, but yet look how much energy it produces into creating all these flowers, which will eventually turn into seeds. And that's what it's all about. They just want to spread their seeds, and wherever those seeds are going to land up, new plants are going to come up. But yeah, you can see that beautiful red coloration there. And what I like about this bowl is that the shape of it. What I've noticed is during the day, I like to sort of put my finger in there and just check the uh, temperature of the water. Now as a general rule, you want to keep that water as cool as possible when you're growing them outdoors, especially when you get hot summer days. And I've just noticed with the shape of this pot, you can see how it's got a small surface area here and how it sort of angles upwards on an angle like that. The shape of that sort of shields the sunlight from the water underneath here. When the sun's hitting from directly from the top, the pot itself shields that water from the sunlight, keeping it nice and cool. And you can see how the plants here have responded beautifully. They really are looking very, very healthy. All right, so let's have a look here at the main plants. All right, let's come up here. You're gonna to have to excuse the noise here a bit. We've got some development going on here. So yeah, just uh, excuse the noise. Hopefully you'll be able to hear me okay. So starting off over here, I've got some, got these uh, polystyrene boxes and inside them I've got pots and some of them are seedlings. These are ones over here, these two are Drosera banata. It's a native Australian sundew. They, they form fork-leaved fork leaves. And um, I've just got some seedlings in here. And over here as well. So these polystyrene boxes do a good job of keeping the water nice and cool. All I've got here is I've got these pots and I've got them, I've got uh, water underneath them using these kitchen bags which I've wrapped around the rim of the pot and inside at the base of the pot I've inserted wicks and those wicks do a great job of drawing up the water keeping that peat moss nice and damp and of course that's what the seedlings want the seedlings also need a little bit of humidity so hence why I've just cut another bag up again put it around the, the, the edge of the pot and that provides a nice bit of humidity and I've just got these name plastic name tags which add a bit of support because i put on this shade cloth and it keeps the uh, 
sun from being too harsh on those seedlings. So by having a little bit of um, shade, they really do appreciate that. I've got some more Drosera Bonato seedlings over here. They're coming up. Again, the same arrangement with the water, but you can see the fork starting to come up. See that sort of the T form? Oh, you can see that one over there as well on the right hand side. Okay, so let's just cover that up. Sorry, excuse me for a sec. Okay, over here I'm trying to grow some sphagnum moss, which is that green bit of moss. So peat moss is just basically broken down sphagnum moss. So I've just got a peat moss and propagating sand mixture, which I've filled up uh, to about three quarters uh, the height of the pot. And on top of that, I've added some live sphagnum moss. And you can see with these green shoes, so they're coming up quite nicely. It's all about keeping the peat moss nice and damp. Again, I've done that by putting on a plastic bag around the edge of the pot and I've inserted wicks down the bottom. That hydrates that peat moss, which will help the sphagnum moss grow. Over here, well, you can see I've got a lot more sphagnum moss growing, but I've also got in some Venus's fly traps. These are big mouth uh, Venus's fly traps. I've noticed that some of them are struggling a fair bit. Early in the spring, it was quite busy because um, a lot of my value customers were buying big mouth varieties and a lot of them I grow in these large pots so to, I have to obviously separate those plants and ship them out but in doing so a lot of small um, plants I had to repot like you can see over here some of them are quite small and some of them actually are struggling like this one over here even though there's a little bit of green there in the center of the rhizome so I noticed that and what I did with those plants I've just placed them here uh, whereas this um, live sphagnum moss with the shade cloth and also plenty of water in there and they're coming up quite nicely they've recovered quite nicely so it just goes to show if your plants are uh, struggling especially those small ones then try to provide a little bit of uh, shade semi shade keep them well watered and uh, they might come up just as like you can see them right here and I've got some more Venus's fly traps over here again doing the same thing and they've come up quite nicely what's over here just trying to grow some more sphagnum moss there okay so that's for them over here I've got a Saracenia flava the variety is called Rupicophora now the, the reason why it's over here by itself this is like a testing bed now, as I said earlier, all my plants here are watered through wicks. And what I do here, I just basically insert these wicks into the base of the pot. And those wicks are then inserted through the top of these PVC pipes via this cut over here. And I did that cut, it's only about, say, a centimetre and a half across. Those wicks go through that. And, uh, of course, it's watering those PVC pipes, and that's what keeps the plants hydrated this one over here wasn't hydrating as much as I thought the top part over here was quite dry looking so I just inserted a few more wicks and uh, I'm just going to be closely monitoring to see whether that stays nicely hydrated and I do notice especially during those hot days that becomes a real test whether that wicking watering is actually working so yeah time will tell today is quite a cool day but yeah, it's looking quite good there on top. The peat moss is nice and dark, indicating that um, there is moisture around the base of the plant. Okay, now, so over here, these are all Venus's fly traps, different cultivars that I recently ordered from my supplier. I did run out of my big mouth varieties, so there was a strong message there that I had to get some more varieties. And uh, I've just recently potted these. Some are in different potting mixtures so I've just experimented a bit these ones over here you can see these white spots here these are this is perlite so I've added perlite with propagating sand and peat moss I'm gonna see how they go they're looking quite good they've been in here for say the last three weeks even though those leaves are looking quite dry and some of them are browning off around the edges I always like to look at the center of the rhizome that gives you a clue of how healthy that plant is. And you can see here there's a new shoot coming through. 
and you see this one over here as well that's always a good sign so yeah always look at the center of the plant to give you an idea of how that plants going okay just as you can see over here even though these plants some of actually some of these plants spend about three weeks in the mail that was the first lot that I got and um, because of this COVID-19 that there was a big delay and um, I potted them regardless and you can see here look at how many shoots are coming up there so that's a sign that you that that plant is happy it's nicely hydrated through those wicks it's getting plenty of sunlight so yeah just as I said if your plant isn't looking too good look around the center of the rhizome these are the Akai Roos I think that's how you pronounce them you can still tell here by those different colored leaves they're all coming up new shoots coming up from the center there but yeah overall they're looking quite good and hopefully by next year I'll be able to sell them as individual plants over here I've got a bristle tooth so called because of the edges of those traps have got these bristles not so much teeth as you can see over here with this piranha sorry a shark's tooth you can see how there's different formation around the edges that's more triangular or that is triangular whereas over here it's more sort of bristles so yeah this time I thought I'm going to get some different varieties and see how I go with them okay moving along oh look at this beautiful Drosera pygmea I absolutely love these I've got these from a supply here in WA and they're coming up beautifully you can see the center look at that beautiful dark red leaves those rounded ends and in the center there it's quite white and that's where the gemme form so when the gemme is basically a part of the plant it's just genetically the same part of the plant that just falls off and wherever it lands it just starts up a new as a new plant as well as forming gemme it also forms these flowers you can see there's a flower there although that one's closed you see that Oh, you've got an ant there as well. Oh, nice to see. Even though this pudding platform is about six foot up, it always surprises me that I see all types of insects up here, including terrestrial creatures like ants. I did see a trail ant coming up here the other day, so I think it's the same ant's nest that was using this um, source of nectar through my carnivorous plants. So, yeah, it's nice to see them up here. Yeah, but these are gorgeous. I love these Drosera pygmea. I love that nice circular formation and that beautiful white center. Really nice contrast. Moving along, more Venus's fly traps. But again, they're not looking too good, these ones, because again, some of them were spent up to three weeks in the mail. They're all coming, not all of them, actually, about half of them are coming up, so I had to reorder them and I'm so glad that my supply understood by sending me out free plants again. Now, you can see here, this is a Drosera uh, capensis. That's coming up nicely. I always like to look at the dew around the leaves. It's always good to see that. Now, this one over here, along with a lot of my other Drosera capensis, flowered. It's two weeks in December now, and they just keep flowering, these plants. So to sort of stop them from using too much energy I like to cut them off those flowers and uh, if you let them sort of flower too long they can sort of draw a lot of energy out of the plant but this one over here after I've cut the stalk off is recovering nicely and you can tell by the dew around the leaves down the base there is a Drosera spatulata by the looks of it I don't know where that came from I didn't order that but it's still nice to see must have been a seed somewhere attached to the main plants. This is another Drosera capensis, South African sundew. Again, you can see the dew around the leaves, looking quite nice. That's already flowered twice, so it was coming up with a third flower stalk, but I cut that off, so it's nice to see the plant recover. Over here, I've got a red piranha, Venus supply trap. All these are self-watered through the wicks, by the way. And uh, the good thing about drawing them up through wicks is that you keep the peat moss constantly damp. It's the right, at the right moisture at all times, just as it would out in nature. Whenever it does rain, of course, the peat moss does get wet, 
but because these are elevated above the PVC pipes, any excess water runs out of the base of the pot or ends up into the PVC pipe or just comes out onto the ground. So it's just a really good way of uh, keeping the plants nicely hydrated. And of course, have a look at this. This just shows you just how happy some of these plants are. And um, this one over here surely must, um, you know, if there's ever an image of a healthy Venus's fly trap, this must be it over here. There just doesn't seem to be enough space for the plant to send out new shoots. It's almost getting cramped in there, but what a picture of health. This is a G16 times G14. And uh, I've kept a lot of the old leaves there from previous season in there, just to act like a little bit of a mulch. That keeps the moisture inside the peat moss, which helps to keep the plant nicely happy, keep the roots nice and cool and damp. But look at those beautiful red traps. Some of these traps, this one over here, has got two flies in it. It's amazing. You, whenever I see a digested fly in one of these traps, I often wonder, does that attract more insects? It looks like in this case it has. But of course, the insects provide vital nutrients in the form of nitrogen. And there's plenty of flies here which have been caught. But yeah, this is a really special plant for me. And it's just glorious to see it in all its glory. Over here is that red piranha. You can see here down the base, there's all these new shoots coming up, indicating just how happy that plant is. I've ran out of all my Venus's fly traps, including my big mouths, but all these plants over here are breeding stock. But uh, yeah, hopefully they'll, there'll be a few available next year that I'll be able to sell in individual pots. Over here is a shark's tooth, someone I showed you earlier. Look at those beautiful teeth around the edges of the trap coming up quite nicely and over here I've got Drosera spatulata and they're looking beautiful as well that's flowered already so hence why I've got a pot here just with peat moss hopefully some of those seeds will land from that capsule into this peat moss and form new plants fingers crossed Okay, there's more Venus's fly traps there. All these ones over here are just breeding stock now. So, we'll see what happens next year. Hopefully I'll have a few there to sell. Over here I've got Saracenia seedlings. These are as a result of my cross-pollination project. They were crossed with a Saracenia flava river capora, one of those, with a Saracenia flava red tube crossed with an alata red throat. This is a small variety over here. That's coming up, you can see that beautiful trap over there which is more brightly coloured and as they mature they turn nice burgundy red. Look at that. So that's what these seedlings are crossed with. As they're getting larger now I'm starting to see a little bit more colour. It's more easily identifiable and they're looking quite beautiful. A lot of these leaves will start off yellow and as they get older they'll just turn dark red so it's beautiful to see the color transformation but yeah as they get older it will be more visible as to how they look like can't wait for that there's some more saracenians over here it's quite a lot of hard work you've got a given time to grow but it is very very rewarding so i do encourage you to do a cross pollination if you have two different varieties of North American pitcher plants. It's a lot of fun transferring pollen from one flower to another and uh, yeah it's nice to see the seedlings and seeing the different uh, colorations and forms that result. Have a look at my YouTube channel for my previous cross-pollination project. Now over here I've got my taller plants. These are the North American pitcher plants. Now that's no by accident that I've placed them over here. Over there is the Eastern Sun. And all over here are my low-lying plants. So as the sun sets over there, all these plants are getting plenty of sun. And there's nothing tall in front of them between the plants and the setting sun over there. Sure, I've got one over here, which is a... Um, I'm testing them out with the wicks, but it's not enough to obstruct too much light. So it's all about getting plenty of light for your plants. And 
you know, I keep saying it, but the more light you can give your plants, uh, the better, the more vibrantly coloured they'll be. Of course, for these small venus display traps, if you do find that you've just, you know, recently repotted them and they're not coming up so well, you can see this one over here, give them a little bit of um, semi-shade, give them plenty of moisture, and as you can see, they will respond. So yes, just try to do some experimenting there. Okay, so moving along over here, as I said, these are the North American pitcher plants. I've got different varieties, Saracenia lacophila. This one over here, it seems to be coming up all right. Yeah, new shoots coming up. Um, some of these weren't wicking as well as I thought, so I had to place more wicks at the base of the pot. And uh, always, whenever I come up here, I look at the color of the peat moss. The darker, if it's a nice dark color, I know it's hydrated. If it's a lighter color, and then I know that it's not getting enough moisture through those wicks. So what I do then, I just add more wicks to the base of the pot. Over here, I've got a Saracenia Flava Rubricopora variety. So we're in the second week of December. It's already come up with its largest pictures. These ones aren't as big, but you can see just how colorful they are. They're looking really, really nice. Moving along, this is a Saracenia Flava Ruglii variety. Look at that, love it. Love that deep red coloration around the base of the hood. You can see just how large these pitchers are. I mean, that one over here is probably about, say, four centimeters across. These were formed in spring. The size, as well as the condition of the pitchers, indicates that these were formed in early spring. They're starting to sort of fray around the edges. The colors are starting to go away a little bit indicate that they're getting quite old and of course new pictures should start to form as the season progresses okay moving along over here this is a Saracenia Flava Maxima variety love that copper color hood I just never tired of seeing that beautiful to see over here I've got a Saracenia Flava red tube crossed with Nalata red throat again you can see just how large these pitchers are and they are starting to fray a little bit as well getting a bit old so you know that they were formed in spring but there are newer pitchers starting to come up as well um, smaller but just as beautiful over here I've got all my breeding stock so these are in large pots and there's more than one rhizome in there so I don't sell these at all I just allow them to grow and next year when they get cramped in those pots I'll divide them and then I'll be able to sell them individually but again all these are watered through wicks at the base of the pot it's good to see this all dark colored peat moss indicating that they're being well watered there's most of these are Saracenia Flava Rubricopora varieties I do have some Saracenia lacophila red vein varieties. This is the one over here, and there's another one out the back over there. See that pitch is quite old, formed in early spring. But there's always flies up here, I'm telling you. Everywhere. There's a lot of buzzing noises going on. Of course, I can't hear that now with all this work going on behind me, but um, look at this plant over here. This is a Saracenia flava. Capria variety, characterized by their supersized uh, lids and their deep red coloration around the base of the hoods. Looking beautiful as ever. And most importantly, yep, nicely hydrated, it's quite damp. All right, so moving along over here, we did get a little bit of wind up here, hence why some of these are a little bit frayed. And I did find a locust up here as well, unbelievably. And it did do a bit of damage to some of these plants. But luckily I was able to get it. Now this one over here, this is a Saracenia. What's it called? Saracenia Flava Ornata variety. Gee, it's gorgeous. Look how yellow it is. This beautiful golden yellow colour with that red coloration around the hood. Looking absolutely gorgeous. And it really contrasts beautifully with those red rubrica varieties, rubrica pora varieties in the background. 
but overall I'm quite happy with them um, some of them as I said I've had to sort of keep an eye out on because not enough moisture was being drawn up through the wicks so some of them may not look the best but I have sort of attended to them and uh, by adding more wicks they have recovered okay so this was always going to be a bit of a risk for me changing my watering technique and I had to really keep an eye on all the plants to make sure that they were going to survive over here is an older one uh, what's it called a maxima variety you can see the uh, bronze colored hood and the picture itself is nicely green it's not no red veins in there at all another one of my favorite plants some of these pictures here are starting to die off which were formed in early spring but there's always these new shoots coming up as well looking beautiful as ever all right over here i've got um, Saracenia lacophila varieties they're all coming up nicely well most of them are some of them have died off and whenever I start to see brown leaves like this and I see a lot of um, green moss around those brown leaves it always suggests to me that that rhizome has basically rotted away and in rotting away it forms nutrients for the um, moss and that's what you get a real build up of green moss like that so yeah, I will be getting rid of that uh, plant and replacing it with another. And that's what my nursery looks like looking back. Again, I am quite happy with it. Um, hopefully, as the days get hotter, they will continue to be hydrated. It's a continuous process of monitoring, making sure that all the plants are okay, nicely damp and happy. But until next time, everyone, happy growing. And uh, if you want to ask any questions or leave any comments, please do so in the comments box. Until next time, happy growing, everyone.